Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today, I'm going to go back to water resistance. Uh, when Watch and Learn was starting up, it was one of the first topics I had tackled. It's like episode, I want to say like episodes five and six or something, and uh, they were very informative. Uh, you should certainly check them out. You know, we discussed what all the various water resistance values mean uh, in real life. Uh, you know, when the watch is on your wrist, what does it mean? Um, and we also discussed uh, the ISO 6425 spec for dive watches. So definitely check those out because I'm not really going to review. I'm not going to talk about that stuff here. Today, it might be, it's going to probably be at least two videos, I think. Today's video, I just want to focus on what the heck is an atmosphere, a bar, how does that relate to meters, feet, you know, whatever water resistance rating your watch might have. So I want to focus on those terms and what they mean because you'll, you'll see watches will say resistant to 100, water resistant to 100 meters, water resistant to 10, 10 atmospheres. What, what does this mean? Uh, you know, and I think, well, I know it, it's horrible terminology because we can all relate to feet and meters. You know, feet if you're in the U.S., meters, you know, if you're, you know, anywhere else in the world for the most part. I, uh, you know, the distance from me to my car is 10 feet. And the distance from me to my car is around three meters. Uh, but what, how is the distance from me to my car in atmosphere or whatever it might be that it doesn't make any sense and in engineering uh, while I get what they mean for you know the layman we're kind of saying that it's equivalent to depth which it's not it's equivalent to a depth of water sure but meters and atmosphere certainly it's apples and oranges they're two totally different things so what I want to show you today is how we actually get from you know three atmospheres of depth to 100 feet or whatever it might be, uh, how those, how all that stuff is intermingled. So basically I'm going to be working with a pad and a pen and doing a little bit of math, uh, very simple math, but I want to show you just the theory behind it and where it comes from. So before we get there, um, wristwatch check, I, I wasn't going to, but I will because I don't know why it just flung into my head. Uh, the UN Maxi Marine Chronometer, certainly no stranger to water resistance, right? And a Sarbo 33. Uh, so what I wanted to say before we really head on over and get into the, the meat of the topic as it were, uh, what is an atmosphere and what is this thing that we consider atmospheric pressure? Well, atmosphere and atmosphere is defined as 14 point, about 14.7 pounds per square inch. Again, everything I'm gonna say in this video is going to be approximations, uh, I know you know, d don't don't kill me. I'm, I'm not going to take everything down to significant digits. Uh, so, you know, we basically consider 14.7 pounds per square inch is one atmosphere. What does that mean? Well, at sea level, if I have a square inch, I can carve out a square inch and imagine me grabbing all the air just above that square inch, a huge column, uh, a skinny building, one inch by one inch that stretches up into the sky. And I weighed that column it would weigh 14.7 pounds. That's all it is. So as you can imagine, because air is compressible, as you go higher in altitude, the pressure is lower at 10,000 feet. You know, it's whatever it is, 10 or 11 pounds per square inch. You know, the, we're, we're most, we're obviously, we're, we're heavy with the atmosphere, the lower you get, the higher you go, it, it's rarefied. Um, and, you know, people need a certain uh, PSI to get oxygen into their bloodstream to you know to breathe and have normal functionality. Uh, that's why that's why airplanes are pressurized usually to eight or ten thousand feet. You know so so you can uh, breathe normally. Um, but uh, so so pressure so pressure is defined as this little square. So fourteen point seven psi is one atmosphere, um, and then in, and then there are other units for it. Uh, one bar is pretty close to one atmosphere. Uh, you'll watch the weather and the weatherman will say the barometer is 29.9 inches of mercury and falling uh, same thing just a different unit it's all pressure uh, inches of mercury more or less is more or less is going to relate to you know, depth of water but uh, that's all they're talking about the barometer is falling we usually think bad weather is coming pressure is falling uh, barometer is going is going up. Uh, we consider that you know sunny weather is coming. The clouds are going to be p 
pushed away. So that's what we mean when we say atmosphere. It is simply a pressure. Now, we obviously on Earth don't feel 14.7 pounds pushing on every square inch of our body. Uh, if we did, it would really hurt because there would be thousands and thousands of pounds pushing on you. Uh, the reason is because there's air all around absolutely everything. I can lift my arm. I'm not lifting 14.7 for every square inch, you know, because there's air underneath it that's that's also pushing on it. And that's kind of hydrostatic. It's a little more advanced, but still I just want, you know, people think, oh, well, 14.7, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, that gets into basically the differences between gauge pressure and uh, absolute pressure. Gauge meaning what a gauge would read and atmospheric meaning uh, absolute what the actual absolute pressure is anyway I, I don't want to get too much into that i do want to head over to the table and just do some simple math to show you how three atmospheres is about 100 feet so in the in my monologue there i um i, I guess I, I forgot to mention i did say it was probably gonna be a couple of parts i don't know if it's gonna be the next watch and learn but what i want to do is actually water resistance test a watch uh, just to kind of show you guys how it works. There's a bunch of methods for it. I want to show you how it works. And I also want to discuss the shortcomings of it because I don't feel, well, it doesn't really represent 100% what a watch undergoes when it's at depth, but uh, that's a conversation for another watch and learn. So what I want to talk about first is you might see your watch is water resistant to say uh, 100 meters. You might see it's water resistant to say 330 feet or whatever. You might see it says something about atmospheres. You might see it, see it says something about bar, 10 bar. I've seen that on Seiko's. What does all of this mean? Well, I put these on opposite sides of the paper for a reason. These are pure depths of water. Now, it's if you really want to get technical, it's not depth of seawater. It's actually, they test watches usually with distilled water. Um, so that's one actual shortcoming. <laughs> but now, let's just assume water is water, it's incompressible, it's seawater, it's distilled water, it doesn't matter. So your watch can be 30 meters water resistant, let's say. Great. Uh, in feet, how do you get to feet? Well, you can multiply it by it was somewhere around uh, 3 feet, 3 inches, and you're going to get roughly 100 feet. And I think most people, I'm not really going to cover this, I mean, most people know this. You can, you can plug it into Google. Uh, if you've got a pixel like I do, you just say... I don't want to say it because my phone's next to me. It'll start talking. You say, okay, that magic word. How many feet is 30 meters? And it will just, boom, it'll pop it out. But if you were to ask or say to somebody, how many atmospheres is 30 meters or how many bar, the, you know, the search engine will probably bring up the relevant articles that are necessary. Uh, but you don't really get a sense for why that is. So, I'm going to basically shelve this part of the conversation. I think we all know how to get from meters to feet, feet to meters, uh, all good stuff. I want to discuss how this correlates to this, whoops, and this correlates to this. And basically just by making them correlate to each other. So back in the watch and learn number six or number five or whatever it was, um, I think I gave an equation that kind of looked like this. Now don't, don't freak out. Um, it's like a, it's called Bernoulli's equation for the most part, and what it's saying is that the total pressure is equal to the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure plus the pressure of depth, the hydrostatic pressure. Um, this one we're going to disregard because we don't need it, and I'm not going to worry about it right now. This is dynamic pressure. I discussed this in one of the other watch and learns, and this is that term people say, oh, well, it's 30 meters water resistant. Uh, is not doesn't mean you can go down 30 meters because once you move your arm through the water, it creates dynamic pressure. It does create dynamic pressure, but we showed in a prior watch and learned that this is a very small number, and we can usually approximate it to be close to zero. Uh, watch that watch and learn. One of the biggest things being, in my opinion, being spread on the internet uh, about dynamic pressure. It is a falsehood. I. Uh, Basically, that leaves us with pressure due to depth. So that's, this is what we're going to look at, pressure due to depth. Pressure due to depth is simply, I'm using Z for depth. It's kind of like a, you know, the Z dimension, X, Y, Z. Anyway, pressure due to depth is equal to the density of the fluid times gravitational force times the depth that we are. So what's interesting to note about this is area does not come into effect at all. Uh, if you take a... Uh, a test tube of water that's five miles high, okay? So say theoretically, a test tube that's this diameter and it's five miles high, the pressure at the bottom 
will be the same pressure as the pressure in the ocean at 25,000 feet of depth if you went to like the Marianas Trench or whatever. Uh, extremely important to recognize that. Uh, pressure is a pound per square inch or a newton per square meter or whatever. It's, it's already broken down into an area format. So pressure doesn't change based on area. Force changes based on area, sure, but pressure does not. Important to note that. Uh, so a lot of times, uh, so density of water, uh, gravitational force and depth. Density of air is obviously very light. Uh, it's a very low number. Um, density of water is a very high number. So the density times the gravity, and again, I'm going to use you know the U.S. system of units. It's easier for me, but this is a number that is kind of known. It's 64 pounds per cubic foot. That is the force density or the actual weight density, if you will, of water. Uh, I believe it's abbreviated gamma. Uh, my microphone, my microphone uh, meter is in the way of what I'm writing. I th hope I just wrote a gamma. Uh, so it's uh, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Again, not an exact number, but uh, it's pretty darn close to that. And because water is incompressible and things don't change much with temperature, we can kind of use this number uh, for our illustration purposes. 62.5 pounds, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. So if I had a cube of water, a cube one foot by one foot by one foot tall, okay, and filled with water, it's going to weigh 62 pounds. It's a big number. Water, water is heavy, as you guys, I'm sure, realize it when you pick up something filled with water and you go, wow, this is, it's heavy stuff. It is. It's very heavy. I mean, it's not as dense as mercury or lead, but it is certainly uh, heavy. Um, actually, I don't know if it's as dense as mercury. I take, I take that back. Maybe it's not. Uh, <laughs> um, but so we have to take this number, multiply it by a depth, and we're going to get a pressure. So let's do that, right? So let's do, um, so, oh, look, I did write a gamma. It just moved it out of the way of the uh, meter. Looks pretty good. Uh, so the pressure due to the depth is going to be 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And let's say we're down 100 feet. And simple math tells us that the pressure due to depth is 62. 40 pounds per square foot, right? Because we, we have a foot here, a foot here. It cancels one of them, becomes six, 62, 40 pounds per square foot. So in my monologue, again, I had said that the atmospheric pressure, one atmosphere, is 14.7 pounds per square inch. We need to translate this to PSI, or pounds per square inch, from pounds per square foot. And all we really have to do is divided by 144 because there's 144 square inches uh, in a square foot. We do that and we get, I actually have to use a calculator for this, give me one second. So my phone has just told me the answer is 43.3 repeating pounds per square inch. Okay, so that's the pressure at 100 feet of depth. Well, what the heck does that mean? Well, I told you before that the atmosphere sea level is 14.7 pounds per square inch. That was in air, but that's the measurement they're using in the industry to tell you the water resistance at depth. Confusing as hell? Sure. But really what they're saying is how, how deep or, or what is the pressure at this depth in relation to how the much pressure there is at sea level. I, I kind of like double spoke there. Uh, what they're saying, at, at 100 feet, the pressure is some number. That number is a multiple of what the pressure is at sea level due to air. That's all they're saying. So to get how many atmospheres this is, we just have to divide this by 14.7 pounds per square inch, and we will get how many atmospheres this is. And my phone has just told me this equals 2.95, and that is an atmosphere. Um, again, so approximation, of course, but I just showed you that 100 feet of depth in water is equal to three atmospheres. That now on the previous page will get you to uh, wh what you wanted, making atmospheres equivalent to depth. You could do this with any number. You do it with 500 feet, 1,000 feet, whatever your watch might say. You can do it backwards if your watch says 10 atmospheres. Uh, you could do it that way, and if it's 10, I mean, n now that you have it, you kind of know it. Um, I'm just picking it up because it's in, it's in my way here. Uh, you can do this with, with any number. You can, you know, 
solve for this and, and, and know this or you know know this and solve for this, whatever you want to do. So basically that's how they are converting atmospheres to feet. So at the end of the day now, you know, we can say three atmospheres equals 100 feet. And really what they're saying, it equals 100 feet of water. It's kind of what they're saying. It's like a pressure head. Uh, but that is... That's what it is, and that's where it comes from. Uh, I said in the beginning that uh, an atmosphere and a bar are really closely related, within like 1 or 2% of each other. So it's also 3 bar. 3 bar is about 100 feet. Uh, so forth and so on. And uh, one thing I just want to say before wrapping it up is just think about this number for a second. We went down 100 feet in water, and we got the equivalent of 3 times the pressure that we see at sea level from air. Now think about this. The, the pressure at sea level is caused by that square inch column that I said that extends all the way up to the sky. So, you know, however far the atmosphere goes up, 100 miles, whatever it is, I'm sure somebody will comment, I don't know, you know, what we count as atmosphere, 100 miles or whatever it might be, all that air is, is smaller, one third as small as going down 100 feet of water. So basically you divide it so it's 33 feet is one atmosphere. So 33 feet of water is equivalent to all that air above one square inch on land. I think that's amazing uh, and just shows you how much more dense water is than air. Uh, I think that about wraps it up. Uh, this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com with Watch and Learn, showing you how to get your atmospheres to your feet, your feet to your atmospheres, your bars to your meters, your meters to your bars. Whatever you want to do, this formula will work for everything. Just don't forget those, you know, like NASA with the, one of those probes, don't forget to check those units. Uh, if you're going to do it in metric, you got to convert this 1,000 kilograms per meters cube or whatever it might be in the metric system. Uh, anyway, uh, please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. And if you have any questions or comments, want to add something intelligent below, please do. I love to read it. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye.